Welcome to this session in which we will discuss electrical hazards and controls at workplace. Uh, first of all, we would like to uh, quickly go through the main hazards associated with electricity at work, uh, starting with electrical shock, burns, fires and explosions, arcing, arcing and secondary hazards such as falling from height due to electrical shock and uh, damage to eyes uh, from the uh, uh, UV. Uh, so in conclusion, uh, electrical hazards could affect humans and it could also affect the uh, property. Uh, electrical hazards and control measures, uh, when we discuss them, we uh, need to know the electrical effects, effects on body uh, what factors does it depend on? So it, it depends definitely on the voltage and the frequency of uh, the electricity, the duration of uh, electrocution or exposure, and the resistance, whether it's dry or wet, and the path that the current takes through the human body, as you can see in the image, makes a, a huge uh, difference into the uh, level of effects or damage to uh, the human body. Um, what are the main uh, causes of electrical uh, fires? Uh, of course, the misuse and poor maintenance of electrical equipment. So our electrical equipment could be of a very high quality, good brand, but we misuse them. We don't store them in the right place. We don't uh, maintain them or the maintenance is happening, but by the wrong people, unqualified people. Uh, we don't have proper maintenance records. We overload the equipment, one of the reasons. Uh, but it could be the poor design of the, of the equipment or that the equipment is not actually suitable for our uh, use. Uh, so these are all could be uh, causes uh, behind electrical fires. And it could be the incorrect installation. So the electrical equipment might be fine. We are using it in the right way, but it was installed incorrectly. I'd like to say that electrical fires are the main um, cause of fires in the residential buildings and it's also in, uh, in workplaces as well. Um, we, when we talk about electrical fires, we should not forget static electricity, which could be associated with um, uh, pumping of fluids, uh, spray painting and dust in the workplace. It is a real challenge, particularly in explosive atmospheres and uh, a lot of uh, people tend to forget about static electricity, in which cases we have to provide our workers with special um, uh, safety boots, uh, special um, overalls made of special materials, and we limit the movements of the people and of the equipment uh, to a very controlled uh, level to avoid uh, the static electricity, because the spark associated with static electricity could start um, a fire easily. When we talk about uh, electrical hazards controls, following the logical order of hierarchy of control measures, which we spoke about many times before, applying it to electrical hazards, so it's elimination, substitution, engineering, admin controls, and PPE. If we apply it on electrical hazards, we start elimination by removing the source of electricity before working off, uh, on it, ideally. If we could not do that, and we sometimes, it's impossible for us to do it, then we have to uh, reduce or substitute it by lower uh, voltage, so the uh, level of risk will be lower. We don't eliminate it, but we are lowering it. Uh, if that is um, also difficult or impossible, then we use the engineering controls to do with the design, such as using the earthing, double insulations, fuses, and all these kinds of engineering, electrical engineering systems. Uh, to provide the uh, protection and adding to that uh, together with the regular inspection to our equipment and maintenance and safe system of work by training the staff, uh, warning them to the uh, correct use of the equipment, keeping uh, proper maintenance records, so on and so forth. And of course, uh, PPE, the last, uh, the last line of defense, uh, we call it, uh, that's by uh, providing our uh, workers who work with electricity with a special uh, insulated gloves and boots if required. Um, overhead power lines are one of the uh, risks associated with electrical uh, hazards, of course. 
um, as much as possible, we should avoid working under or near overhead lines. Um, if not possible, then we need to divert overhead lines uh, clear of work areas uh, or otherwise isolate lines while work is in progress. Uh, if not possible, then we have to work around the overhead lines, unfortunately, but take all the precautions required to provide safety for our, uh, our uh, workforce. Um, inspection of electrical equipment. Um, what are the, like, if you like, the simple checklist when we conduct the inspection of electrical equipment? We need to check that there is no bare wires. Uh, cable cover uh, cover is not damaged in any uh, place. Uh, plugs are in good conditions, and many times people forget to check the plugs, but they are part of the electrical equipment and one of the main reasons of the actual actually the failures of the fires. Uh, there is no tape or uh, non-standard joints uh, in the equipment or the cables. Uh, no damage or sign of damage to the casing of the equipment, and no signs of overheating, previous overheating, such as uh, marks of burns on the cables or plugs or on the equipment. Any of these signs, if we notice them, then we should not use the equipment and we should take it for maintenance and checking before um, using it again, if we can use it again. Um, what is the safe system of work when it comes to electrical safety? So, the electrical uh, isolation, so we make sure that the equipment is dead. Um, all live conductors are properly isolated uh, and it's properly earthed, the equipment is properly earthed, uh, that all the electricity has been discharged so there is no residual electricity in the, in the equipment and then we can decide that work can safely commence and this should be signed by an authorized person so it's a permit to work uh, system uh, should be applied in, in this case. So, in summary, it's dead, isolated, earth, and discharged. Causes of electrical accidents. Most of the common causes of electrical uh, accident could be summarized uh, by four main points. That the equipment is thought to be dead, but it's actually live. Or the equipment is known to be live, but lack of experience make the people use it or deal with it in the wrong way, are not taking uh, the right uh, level of precautions, uh, maybe failing to use the correct tools or equipment, and not taking uh, adequate precautions to deal with um, the signs of damage that we might see in the equipment or signs of failures or overheating or overloading. So the worker continues to use the equipment until, until we end up with an accident. Working in wet conditions is a challenge uh, when it comes to uh, electrical safety. Definitely we should try to avoid that uh, situation as much as possible. We can't always avoid it. So in this case, we reduce the voltage used. Uh, we use uh, water resisting uh, materials and equipment and connection. So with double isolations, uh, we apply safe system of work with the required precautions, uh, information, instruction, training, and supervision to our uh, staff, and use the right uh, PPE uh, for these conditions. Uh, electrical maintenance strategies. Uh, we need to have the user, to get the user to check the equipment before each use, and preferably after the use as well. Uh, formal inspection and testing of the equipment has to be also conducted by a, a competent person. How frequently should we conduct the inspection, the formal inspection? This is a question which we can answer only after reading the manual uh, uh, of the equipment or manufacturer guidance. We also need to take into account the atmosphere in which we are using the equipment in and the frequency of use and the load that we are putting the equipment under. These are factors which might uh, make us actually shorten the period of uh, the inspection rather than six months, we make it three months or, or shorter. It's very important to keep uh, test records for many reasons. First of all, for legal requirement in case there's a, any court case in the future. And also for um, checking the frequently occurring failures in the equipment 
uh, probably would decide not to buy the same equipment in the future because only the equipment with this brand have these kinds of failures. So it's a learning experience for us. We, it's a very valuable information. We need to keep it. Might, we might find that only when the maintenance is done by so and so person, we have a failure shortly after that. So maybe there's a problem with the person who's doing the maintenance. So there are many factors that we can uh, actually consider when we look into the records. Um, so it allows, um, the, also, of course, allows us to monitor uh, the frequency of the maintenance, so whether we are following the, the plan that we put already, um, provides the records, uh, and uh, as I say, checking the suitability of the equipments and helps to control the, the misuse of uh, the equipment. So that was the last slide in our uh, video today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much, and I will meet you in other uh, safety-related videos.